at uh, the end of February of this year, as I said, we have 919 <coughs> full-time employees, and you can see the number of employees in each of those categories. And the second column is just the percentage of employees in those categories compared to the whole. For example, you just would take 32 administrative employees, divide it by 919, that's 3% of your workforce. So that's how that works. Now what did we project four months down the road at the end of this fiscal year? Our projection is that we'll have 905 employees, and you can see the percentage of the categories toward the whole is identical. So what that tells us is we're pretty much on track. We're managing those critical areas and continuing to staff those areas as we're declining in others. The concern, for example, if we looked at our numbers and we had 45 administrative staff and our goal is 30, obviously we want to know what's going on with that. But fortunately that's not the case, so our overall plan is right on target uh, as to what we would expect. <coughs> This chart uh, has a lot of information. As I started out uh, and uh, told you, I'll take you back 14 months from January and, and describe what's happened with our staffing. And this is uh, this chart, I think, displays that. To uh, let you know, during this time, the blue bars are the separations. The darker blue are retirements. The lighter blue are other separations, both voluntary and involuntary. A uh, major component of our workforce plan is obviously performance management. So we want to appropriately reward our employees and retain our employees, but we also want to hold our employees accountable. So about a third of our 37 individuals who have left over this 14-month uh, period was an involuntary separation. So those are the blue lines. The orange, the darker orange, are new hires actually external applicants that we brought in to KEB that have increased our number of employees. The lighter orange is where we had vacancies filled by internal current KEB employees. And the point really here, <coughs> if you look at it, is uh, I'll just point out a few there. In construction, I think the corner is showing up, but construction and plants, uh, as I said, we have a longer tenured workforce, so we expected to have more retirements, and that indeed is the case. But you'll notice as we've had those retirements, we replaced about 75% of those vacancies to maintain those skill sets. Uh, electrical workers is another key area. Lost three, uh, replaced uh, those skill sets with three. Engineering, two. Uh, actual resignations, one retirement, but uh, we've replaced the three we lost with three new engineers, and so on and so forth. And as you recall, our goal in the paraprofessional category, which is our HR technicians, our accounting associates, our payment processing folks, uh, was to reduce that over time. And you can see we've lost six individuals, but we've been able, again, to leverage those skills. An example is, the technology with online payment process and online billing has reduced the need in our payment processing area. So we've been able to, as we've um, had separations through attrition and retirements, to be able to <coughs> allocate those skills without adding to our staffing plan. Professional, uh, 10 uh, resignations, three retirements, and we typically see in the professional category a higher level of turnover. That's been the, the case for a number of years. As you can expect, a lot of those are resignations, um, ORNL, TBA, private firms. So that's been a, a long-standing trend that we're very much aware of. But we have, in the 13 vacancies that have arisen in that category, we've replaced the four positions, and those are regulatory compliance specialists. Again, it's not just looking at the overall category, it's identifying that critical skill and making sure you're addressing that concern. Now you might look at the last category, technical, and say, well, there seems to be an issue. And this is where, again, you have to look beyond the numbers. We've lost 13 individuals. That's a critical area. Uh, only hired four external. And the reason for that, as I said, we've um, discontinued appliance repair. We had six service technicians in the technical area performing that work. 
And so as we've had attrition in that category, we haven't had to replace workers and add to the staffing plan. We've been able to reassign <coughs> the, uh, the service techs to other areas to not increase our overall staffing plan. So here's, uh, again, an example where you, you have to kind of look at the skill sets and the processes and not just uh, the numbers. Kind of to, to sum up, and I mentioned payrolls down 2% over this time period, over time 26%. Uh, just to kind of give you some details behind those numbers, over time, you may recall back in the spring, we had a first responder presentation to the board. And the purpose of that was really how we changed our planning and our scheduling of work to align with our emergency repairs and have folks available the second and third shift so we're not calling individuals in for overtime. And when we hopefully when we don't have emergency work, they're doing system monitoring, inspections, and fully utilized in other areas. So again, um, that's been a positive uh, result. The, the obvious question when you look at overtime is, well, storms are so much a part of the overtime cost, could it be that you just had fewer storms? Well, not, not really. In, in 2008, we had five significant storm events. 2009, we had four. So the storms are relatively stable, and it's really the scheduling of these areas as we drill down into it that's caused a reduction in our overtime. And finally, as, as I said, we track this monthly, we have all the data, project, projected attrition, and why are we doing this? And, and obviously it's to reduce our costs. <coughs> and to reduce our costs to minimize the impact on our, our customers. And at the same time, be very aware that we have to continue our commitment to safe, reliable service. And how we do that is as we're reducing our staff, continue to maintain a qualified workforce uh, to meet those objectives. So. Uh, that's really our, our plan, and uh, like I said, we continuously monitor that plan and adjust accordingly, and I'd be happy to try to answer any questions you may have. How is, uh, in your next to last slide, you had, uh, you have 08 and 09, how, and we're almost three quarters of the way through the fiscal year, is 010, is 2010 trending? It is, it is. Um, I used calendar year because we really accelerated our efforts in January 09, uh, but uh, those trends are, are down as well. Uh, fiscal year looks about <coughs> percent, so you can break it down either way. So. I know I sound like a broken record, but <laughs> those last two objectives are, are just as important as the first objective. Um, and in that one chart, I mean, we're we started this plan what in January of 09 and, and we're a year and a month into it and we're already 25 positions ahead if you will of where we thought we would be and that's that's great from a cost savings point of view but I, I mean you all are the professionals and you know what you're doing I just want to be sure that we're not suffering um, you know safety reliability or customer service you know as we do that I mean that that one chart you showed three or four charts ago that showed <clears throat> that one there. Yeah. I mean, that, you, at first blush, you think, wow, we're really doing great. But then I look at it and I think, wow, I hope we're being careful. <laughs> well, and two, uh, we're sort of zooming in, obviously starting at 900, so the slope looks a little more dramatic than it actually yeah. is. Um, we've had steady attrition in that area for years. We're replacing about a third of those we lose, but being very systematic about those areas. Uh, our construction, our skilled crafts, our electrical workers. And so <coughs> we try to have a plan and not just say, okay, we've got to get this number. And we adjust that accordingly because that is our overall concern as well, is, is to do it in a, in a very systematic way. And another example, um, when we announced the recession response plan and this, I recall uh, us talking about, I hope our customers understand and if they have to wait a little bit longer on the phones, but they'll be patient. At the same time, we implemented new web features where people can go on the web and do a lot of their starts and stops and pay their bills, et cetera, on the web. It's The truth is, and you'll see it in the five-year plan presentation, our metrics in our phone center are better today than they were when we started this plan because we're sending so much of the work out of the branches.